Hi, welcome back to Chops Garage. We've got a travel mug ready because Adrian and I are about to make a big old trip up to Solly Hull. Adrian somehow managed to get here today in his little smart car, but it is pouring with rain and there's lakes everywhere, so it's going to be a very interesting journey. He's going to drive the Cougar and I'm driving the car we're going to pick up back. Now, the car we're going to pick up, I'm not going to tell you what it is. We'll have a bit of a game along the way and see if you can work out what it is. All I'm going to say is it's going to finish off my midlife crisis collection really nicely. It is the uh, traditional midlife crisis car, but it is a car I've wanted for a long while. Opportunities come up to grab one. So we're going to go and get it and we'll bring you along for the journey. Adrian did bring us McDonald's to get us set off. So we're in the Cougar. We just literally went through a lake. I forgot to record it. Adrian's driving because apparently he's seen my videos and uh, <laughs> doesn't fancy taking his chances. <laughs> so we're off to Solly Hall. We reckon it's going to be about three and a half hours, but might be longer with this weather today. Absolutely the wrong day to pick up this type of car as well. So Adrian and I, as we're driving along, we're having a chat about things. And uh, an interesting one has come up. Age went and picked up a car the other day, didn't you? What was it, a Lexus? Lexus IS200. IS200, but it was a shell, wasn't it? Just a shell. Yeah, well, it was, it was everything apart from the engine and gearbox. <laughs> so tell the people, what was the story on that? Why did you have to go and pick it up? Uh, basically what had happened, uh, the lad had a car for a few years. He'd already spent a lot of money. had a set of bucket seats in it, half cage nice alloys, decent tyres on it, big brake upgrade, um, but he'd taken it as someone to get a three litre straight six, which I'm assuming might have been a 2JZ um, engine, putting it in gearbox. He gave them um, ten and a half thousand pounds to do the work. Um, they then had it for a good few months um, and were sending him pictures here and there of, oh, we've done this, we've done that, we've done this. So obviously he's quite happy. Um, then they give him a call just before Christmas and said, uh, really sorry, you can come and get your car, but we're going out of business, so you need to come and take your car away or it'll be gone. Um, and when he got there, there was no engine or gearbox. All of the work they said they'd done, they hadn't done at all. And because they did a lot of conversions, they'd obviously just been sending him photos of someone else's car that they'd been working on at some point. Um, yeah, so he lost everything, 10 and a half grand down. Left of a car that he reckons he can't afford to do anything to for the next couple of years. Well, it saves money up. And the, the horrifying thing about that is, is we were just chatting about it, and that's not the only story we've got. We've got loads of stories like that. And it got me to thinking, you know, I hear this an awful lot where people go and get cars restored and they put these big deposits down and then nothing really happens and they end up having to go and get the cars back. Or at worst, the companies just fold because they're limited companies and they can just fold and they're not how don't have any personal liability for what they owe people and it's um we were thinking about it and we're wondering if there shouldn't be like when you rent houses you have to put the person's deposit into a deposit scheme by managed by a third party and it's only released to you when both parties are happy at the end when someone's moved out and if you build like a house and you get a loan from the bank, don't you? They come along and check each stage, don't they? You've heard of that, Adrian. You've yeah, yeah. They come along, right. check that it's all being done properly before they release the next tranche of money. And you hear about so many people getting burnt on cars um, that that there needs to be some form of protection. I know we've got the law, but at the end of the day, what happens is, and the worst thing that happens, and you hear about it happening all the time, is once people are given the money and they're sort of into it, they kind of just live in the hope it's finally get done and actually end up giving more money because they just want their project finished and hope that that will actually g it into action and get it happening again and once they're into that level of cash you know five ten grand they can't bail they don't want to upset the person by kicking off at them and for fear of losing all of their money and, and them just telling them to get lost and they um they don't want to bail at that point they just live in hope it's finally get done these it's just horrifying really these stories you hear there does need to be some form better form of protection for this don't get me wrong i know there's there's companies that i do restore properly but what i just say to any of you out there is if you're looking at having a project done don't be releasing large tranches of money give a bit to cover the parts of the work at the beginning but then physically go in and check on your project and don't release that's the key thing we hear about adrian isn't it? all these people we hear about they've never gone in and checked have they? they just no. 
rung up and got updates without physically yeah, going and seeing themselves. Just been sent pictures that is that actually your car? If, you know, if it's the same colour vehicle, unless you can see the registration plate, you've got no idea what they're actually working on or what they're sending. You, you have to be so careful. One tip is check Google for images because I had this with an MGB. I don't know if I've told you a story, Adrian. I think I told the guys where I bought an MGB once based on pictures and uh, sent a guy to go and pick it up and the the um the, the, I never got the car and when I actually checked the images I found they're on Google on Google images so it was really quite credible because all the images were there but the guy just pulled them off of Google so yeah don't the key thing is you physically must go down only release small amounts of money at a time physically go down and see that the work is being done before you release more cash because I I hate to think of how many stories like this I've heard go down in the comments below I bet some of you have had stories like this below as well and what's your top tips for not getting burnt on it and some of you guys that do proper restorations how do you go about doing it to make sure you're that everybody understands exactly where they are with the money side of things but yeah I really feel for that lad he, I, I got it. how is he gonna find another 10 grand to do that it's horrendous I don't know how these people sleep at night I really don't one important question for Adrian is he knows what we're going to pick up what's your thoughts on my purchase Adrian <laughs> Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely. Do you think I'm having a midlife crisis? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but is it a good choice for a midlife it's, crisis? It's a perfect choice, to be fair. Absolutely perfect choice. <laughs> and what do you think of me driving it in this weather? Good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> we should have got a car with a tow bar on the back, shouldn't we, for sure. So getting close, about an hour away now. The weather's cleared up a bit. The Cougar being okay for you, Adrian? Behaving very itself? Very good, very impressed so far. Very good. Adrian will give it, we'll get Adrian's review on it at the end, and then it'll be advertised as signed off by A&K Van Services. <laughs> <laughs> the warrants will stand with them. <laughs> We're getting close to, uh, <laughs> to the pickup of Project, what was it? Not Middle Age Spread. <laughs> Midlife crisis, that was it, not middle age spread. That's already well underway. <laughs> so we've made it back alive, Adrian made it back in the uh, Cougar. Got you there safely enough, didn't it? Lovely. And I got back in it, you haven't seen it yet, it's time for you to see it. I got back safely in the 911. <laughs> but it's getting on, we need to give it a clean. We'll catch up with you in the morning and have a look over it. So here we are guys, it's actually a couple of days later. Um, all cleaned up, put away inside. I did want to get onto it straight away and share it with you guys, but I was just so busy. And obviously, we've got to pay the bills first and foremost. We can't just be playing around with the 911s. So the car did not miss a beat all the way back from Solly Hull. Temperature stayed exactly where it should. Oil pressure did. Everything just ran like an absolute dream. No issues whatsoever. I did some strong pulls with Adrian behind me in the Cougar while we were on the motorway to check see if there was any smoke, that kind of thing, under hard acceleration. He said, not a whiff at all. And bearing in mind how cold it was as well, you'd expect to see something. So very pleased about that. Massive thanks has to go out to Adrian for putting up with me for that period of time driving all the way up to Solly Hole and on my end this nattering. So massive thanks as always to Adrian from A&K Van Services. I did offer him a little drive when we got back, but he wasn't keen to do it because the road's so icy, still is. And um, it was just a bit too risky. There's lots of flood water around. So exactly what have we bought? What we have bought here is a 2004, uh, 2005, it must be, sorry, late 2005. You should know he's bought it. Um, but, so what have we actually bought? Well, it's a 2005 Porsche 997. So it's a 911, but the model is a 997. And this is the 3.8 Carrera S. So in this year, they did a 3.6 and then they did a 3.8. Now this is a Carrera S with a lot of extras on it as well. Now, I was in two minds as to whether to put this car on the channel or not, because I know I'm going to get a very mixed response on it. There's going to be those people that followed me from the very beginning that know that I worked all the hours under the sun on very cheap cars from auction, did all the work myself, and really did all the graft, and this is sort of a present to myself, 
and they'll appreciate that and they'll other people that just go oh, you've got above your station like every other youtuber you got yourself a supercar now let's be honest about it. it's not a massively expensive 911 there's people out there driving brand new ones this is an older 911 so it is within the realms of being affordable for a lot of people it's not necessarily something you'd want to use as your daily i guess you could do but you would devalue it quite a lot so yes i was in two minds about whether to show it on the channel but this is a car that i have always wanted to own i don't know how many of you agree with this but the 911 is just one of the best looking cars ever and anytime there's ever a program on the best sports cars they always come back and say 911 is the best sports car ever so yeah i've always been on the lookout for one now this one popped up on the trade page on facebook there's a trade to trade page on facebook you can join if you're a genuine trader because it's for traders to trade to each other no consumers normally a lot of it ends up being traders moving on toys they shouldn't have bought like this kind of thing but this car actually came from the equivalent of a we buy any car type site so this guy runs a site where he uh, you know offers to buy your vehicles up in solihull and he has a lot of high-end clients i was down there was Aston Martin 4x4s, the new ones that were less than a year old being traded and he was trading on to other people. There was an S2000 Honda up there, Mercedes AMGs, all kinds of things. So he does a lot of nice cars and he popped this one up. One of his customers had uh, brought this into him and he popped this up on the page. I saw it there. I put a bid in. Before I thought about it, he accepted it and I was off up to Solihull to pick it up. And it was really one of those, if not now, when kind of things. You know, I'm getting on. <laughs> I guess I'm not really getting on that much. But I'm mid-40s, and yes, it is a, a, a sort of typical midlife crisis car. But this shape here, like I say, it's just always something I wanted. And now you can't go through life worrying about what other people think of you and whether they think you're having a midlife crisis or not. It's a car I've always wanted. I've got the opportunity to get it, so I got it. Now, obviously, big concern buying a car like this from somebody that has put it into a we buy any car type site now i'm probably already i'm guessing in the comments we've had ims bearing and we've had bore score mentioned even before i got 30 seconds into doing the into the video when i showed what car it was it's going to be absolutely full of that and that is a fair comment these cars do have a reputation for the ims bearing so it's a bearing between the engine and the gearbox leaking and causing problems and bore score where the bores, the, the cylinders of the engine get scoring on them and the cars smoke badly. Now, there's two minds on this. Specialists will actually tell you it affects a very small percentage of the cars. But if you read on the internet, you'll be terrified and you'll never ever dream of buying one. So there's a few essential checks you do before buying this one. Now, one thing that the guy did when he listed the car is he put up pictures of the service book and in the service book it had the same specialist on a number of services so i thought i've got nothing to lose i picked up the phone i rang the specialist and uh, we'll see their receipt in a bit i can't remember what the name of hand i was fully expected to get told to get lost because they didn't want to give that kind of information up or didn't have the time to spend with me discussing it and my main question was going to be have you got any notes on your system because the last service wasn't that long ago saying why this customer might have got out of this car gave him a ring and they were brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Had no qualms chatting to me about it at all because I did explain it wasn't with that customer anymore. It was with a trader. So they weren't giving away any uh, any secrets. And they went through all the information. They went through their system, all the services they've done on the car, um, all the work they've done on it. They knew the car. They said the guy had no problem spending money on it when it needed stuff. Invoices include, we'll look through them in a bit, a upgraded IMS bearing on the car so not only has the IMS bearing been done it was upgraded at the same time a clutch was put in it has multiple bore score reports on it as well so that gave me confidence and these guys said there's no notes no reason we know of why the chap would want to get rid of the car other than the fact he just fancied a change because he's always spent the money that needs to be spent on it and all the major things have been done on it the other thing that gave me confidence is the person selling it only did trade to trade. That is their rule. You were there, you could not buy as a consumer from at all. So it wasn't like it was a trader had got it, found problems with it after its part change and wanted to get out of it. They only did trade to trade sales. So it wasn't a case of palming off a troublesome car. So that gave me a bit of confidence as well. But obviously being trade to trade, when you do trade to trade deals, once the car's bought, the car's bought. You've got no comeback at all and they want paying straight away. So I had to pay up and go and pick up the car. But I thought on this occasion, I would actually go up and look at the vehicle, 
you know, rather than, I do buy, I'll be honest, buy most of my cars blind without seeing them. I will just pay for them, go and pick them up and roll the dice. And that's why you get cars cheaper as a dealer, because people want you to just be hassle-free. They want to just have the money from you, go and get the car, no hassle. That's the sort of trade-off to it being a, a, a cheaper car. I did have lots of pictures of the car in detail, and they had validated it beforehand as well. And I got to um, see sort of little, little bits and bobs that the car might possibly need doing. But in reality, having now got it back and looked it over, the thing is mint, absolutely mint. I've managed to find one stone chip on a wing over here. All around the front here, no stone chip in at all. And like I said, there's one little stone chip by the looks of it just here on top of the wing. But the paint doesn't even have swirl marks in it. It's like it has been machine polished and sealed. You know, you know all the spent time I spend buffing cars because your wing mirrors get you know they get lined up from just driving along normally on normal roads but there literally is not a swirl mark in the paint now i paint cars as well you those who watch the channel regularly will know i paint cars so i can normally tell where a car's had paint now i don't doubt it's had paint because of its age but whoever did it did a fantastic job on it the paintwork is absolutely brilliant i cannot see any color differences anywhere in the car so yeah well chuffed with that well chuffed with that so yeah this is the carrera s so this is the 3.8 rather than the 3.6 but it also i took it i did do quite a lot of research on what the right ones to buy were the ones that were going to go up in value the most because then they i'm a trader at some point i will need to get out of the car um so i researched which ones are going to be the more valuable and uh i've locked the car let's unlock it so i can show you now this like i say so let's like say this one has had a lot of the extras tipped and it has a lot of the very desirable options for starters then we've got the metallic paint i think i added up all the extras on as we go through i think all the extras together came out about eight grand so we've got the metallic paint we've got the sunroof we've got the electric seat option as well now the big thing we have which is the most desired option on them is the chrono package so you can see up here we've got the little dial on the dashboard there now that is a lap timer now it isn't just a clock on the dash when you do that when you get the chrono package you also get the sport button down here and the suspension button i mean some of you porsche guys will probably correct me if i get a bit of this wrong but as i understand it when you um operate uh the sport setting you get a different map on the engine and the suspension automatically changes and you also get more uh they loosen off the traction control a little bit so you can have a bit more fun so it's basically full track attack mode we've also got the communication set up with the sat nav and the phone so whoever ordered this car from you pretty much hit all the extras i think there's only one extra they didn't have which is the sports exhaust system but we've got this leather stitch dash up here all this is a, it smells amazing by the way guys it's, i wish i had smell of vision it smells amazing in it they've got the leather st stitch dash like i say we've got the sat nav with the adjustable uh, suspension we've got the air conditioning heated seats as well as electric the seats are heated we've got the leather trim steering wheel with all your phone uh, connections on here the exact mileage is 75,181, so not bad at all for a 2005. Obviously not a, uh, a 911 that was just stored away. It's been used, but still low mileage for the age. Um, we've got either a speed limiter or cruise control. I'm not sure which that is on these, but all your badges are just absolutely immaculate. All your buttons are immaculate. Yeah, electric mirrors as well. All leather stitched on the uh, door cards here inside the car is like outside the car guys it is absolutely mint so we've got the leather seats here they're all in really good condition the bolsters aren't worn through the carpets are beautiful they're like a charcoal and they're in, in really good condition and then we've got this alcantara head liner up here all that is immaculate as well six speed manual obviously manual being the other thing i think 911s with manual gearboxes are always going to be the more desirable they're the ones that are going to go up in value the quickest so i did my research and i think i bought the right one a 3.8 carrera s with the chrono package with the electric seat package the metallic paint the sunroof they're all desirable which, as i say i added it all up and i think it comes to about eight thousand pounds worth of extras course we have the is it frunk people call these 
all this is super clean in here we've got what looks like the original sort of um kit here as well for roadside stops underneath here i imagine that's where your battery lives you've got some fluid stuff in here oh yeah got the brake fluid in there all the carpets in here again mint all in really good condition then of course our bonnet is effectively this bit here now the for anybody asked as well the spoiler does work it's deployed it i think these come up at 62 or 65 mile hour i don't know which is a bit of a giveaway as how quickly you're going but again i had adrian check that on the phone while we were driving along so under here you've got that 3.8 crammed and there's not really anything i can show you in here at all it is so crammed in there i think you have to take the wheel arch liners to get into the sides of the engine and do things like spark plugs and stuff like that um but it all seems clean enough underneath there's been no oil that's off the uh micra there's been no oil dripping on the bottom of it and it is all really dry underneath here now i think i don't have the sports exhaust system because apparently they have um the same if it's a sports one it has two different size ovals on it the one giveaway for bore score apparently is if the left hand bank exhaust um outlets are, are very black and sooty in comparison but these are all nice and even in color across the way so yeah, I mean, like I say, I'd like to show you more in there. All I can say is the temperature stayed where it should, the oil pressure stayed. It gives you an oil reading when you start the car up and the oil reading stayed uh, at the same level. So yeah, it's, uh, it, it, the coolant level is at the right level. Obviously, you worry about these things quite badly, especially when you bought it from a we buy any car type site. But all I can say is I drove all the way back from Solihull and it didn't miss a beat. It didn't overheat the oil temperature and all those things stayed okay so i can only take it as it stands now will it need work it's a 2005 car i don't care what 2005 car you're buying it's going to need work it's just with the 911 it's going to be more expensive so yeah i'm having cleaned it up and got it back and looked over it now i am chuffed the only things i've found blemishes wise is we've got a couple of marks on a couple of wheels so the paint's flaking away a bit there on the corner of the wheel I'm not sure it benefits, uh, it would justify a whole refurb at the moment because the rest of the wheel is mint. What have we got tyres wise on it? We've got Michelin Pilot Sports on the rear there. This front wheel, uh, again, I don't think it's got any, oh, it's got a tiny little mark there on the corner. But again, we've got Michelin Pilot Sports there. Vented and drilled discs, I'm not sure if that's standard or not, with these great big brake calipers. Over this side again, Michelin Pilot Sports. These are cracking on the edge. So they, the sign of the car I think has been sitting around as a bit of a beauty queen. And I can't really blame him because of the condition of it. This alloy is really good, doesn't need anything at all. So we could do with possibly some new Michelin Pilots on the front there. But cracking sidewalls don't actually fail MOT, but obviously on a car like this, you wanna, you wanna get new ones. These ones are all good at the back end, Michelin Pilot and no no damage to the alloy so the only marks literally on a 2005 car i've been able to find is that tiny little stone chip on the front wing and the chipping on the side of the alloys it's literally that good look at it isn't it a stunner but there is a big but and that is and it's not just the 911s obviously the big issue with it is the fact that it is so good those of you who watch the channel know that I spend my time tearing around a £1,000 Suzuki Swift Sport that has some sketchy paint on it and isn't immaculate by any stretch of the imagination and I absolutely love it. I drove this, like I say, back from Solihull. The first place I stopped at was a petrol station, obviously, to fill it up. I was in filling up for fuel and within sort of, you know, just the time of me walking from the car to the petrol station to fill up fuel, two lads were literally all over the car like really close to it made me nervous so i then uh, obviously me and adrian headed back we stopped at the services i parked it up in the services in a normal parking space and i'm looking at this car without a blemish on it thinking what if someone opens their door on it what if someone scratches it so then i'm back to devon and obviously you guys know what the roads are like here in devon you've seen my driving there's a reason that all the cars have brush marks all the way down the side of them and need machine polish and it's because our lanes are really narrow and people come hearing at you in the opposite direction and you often have to dive in the hedge we've got potholes everywhere so sitting on the motorway at sort of 70 mile an hour 65 mile an hour 
and I did I didn't speed at all guys it felt absolutely brilliant and I had plenty of space around me and I didn't have anything to worry about other cars and, and that kind of thing it actually did really good MPG as well I was quite impressed with the MPG it did but as soon as I got it back here in Devon and started bringing it into what we call normal life the normal use of a vehicle it absolutely terrified me now again I know there's gonna be people in the comments down below going you know what is it worth it's probably a 20 retail wise probably a 26 grand car i mean you could i think in this condition these are all about condition aren't they you know this is all about spec and condition there's a lot of carrera s's out there around the 25 mark but they aren't necessarily chrono packages and without seeing them i couldn't tell you if they're in the kind of condition this car is in we have to have a look at the history in a minute don't we and um but so yeah it's probably a you know 26 27 grand car a push a 30 grand car if you're a specialist i think you could probably ask 30 for it and just sit on it until the right buyer comes along but the and that's not a huge amount of money let's not forget your your you know your your average retmobile can cost as much as 30 grand but the th issue with the retmobile is that after a few years when you come to sell it people will just look at the mileage and they'll allow for a few little scrapes and scratches here and there when it comes to reselling a 911 it's going to be all on its condition condition is going to be absolutely everything and if i get a chip or whatever in it and i have to get painted and i can't find someone that paints it to the standard presumably it's had work done on before that's going to massively devalue the car so realistically that's the thing that's, that's kind of like a bit of a bummer with the car I've come to the conclusion that I bought the wrong 911 because I bought exactly the right 911 for being a collector's car, but the wrong 911 to go out and enjoy. I need to find a tatty one with big miles on it that's been mechanically looked after but has big miles on it, but has the bodywork blemishes so I can use it like a normal car and not worry about where I'm leaving it. Comment down below, does that make sense? I'm sure a lot of you have had a lot to say already in the comments, but... Uh, yeah, comment down below if that makes sense. Let's have a quick look at the history side of things. Oh, you're going to want to know about keepers. It's had five former keepers. I don't know if that's a lot or not for 2005. I would say it's probably not a lot for 2005, probably about average, but it's not obviously, I'm sure lots of people would want a one owner 911. Right, let's have a quick look at the history. So 2006 Porsche, uh, 2008 Porsche, 2010, so you see every two years, 2012 Porsche, 2013 it went in, bit early by the looks of it uh 2015 porsche replaced the drive belt then uh 2018 porsche 2020 it goes to specialist zalfon house i think that's who i rung we'll check in a second but they were brilliant uh 2020 and then 2022 porsche so it has a full service history according to the manufacturer's um standard settings with main dealer and then two specialists personally i'd be moving to annual servicing on this annual oil changes unless i was doing mega low miles 2016 we've had a clutch kit clutch release a ceiling ring a clutch fork bolt pin exhaust manifold gasket like i said you know they did say this guy would do whatever needed to be done um they've replaced the cat and uh Oh, remove engine. So they actually took the engine out of the car and replaced the main aluminium coolant pipes. Now that might that's another thing these have, isn't it? I actually I'm discovering this as as I look at it with you. I think these have a, a reputation for the cooling pipes going on them, don't they? So it looks like they've been replaced. So this is a big bill. We're up to thirteen uh, labour is thirteen hundred and sixty two pounds. We haven't got parts in yet. Two thousand sixteen if I didn't say. Yeah, so coolant pipes, wiper blades, um, start a wiring harness harness and then we've got a total bill of three thousand four hundred and seventy seven pounds in 2016. got a porsche receipt from 2020 here um i'm not sure what all this stuff is transverse tub maybe one of you guys know what this is hex bolt coolant hose some other bits and bobs there that bill came out 430 i'm not sure what that was for it looks like they put a spring on it at the same time July 2020, we got a major service including spark plugs and auxiliary belt, £1,255, and they did a gearbox service at the same time. So, although I bought it from a We Buy Any Car type site, guys, I did do my homework because the guy provided me with a lot of these receipts. Some of them, you know, I'm obviously learning as I go along, but I'd seen stuff like this. And we've got a maintenance record that's been printed out here. So it's got 2004, 2006, 
It's got a clutch in 2008 with the rear main seal, then a minor service. And then I think we've got another clutch further down here, 2015. Uh, yeah, clutch and clutch slave cylinder, sorry, 2013. And then here in um, 2018, we've got the IMS upgrade and the bore check done. So as you can see, guys, we have a ton of history to say this car has been properly looked after, hasn't been run on a budget. Now, I didn't get any footage of driving it back, I'm afraid, because I think I was just, just, just too excitable about the whole process of picking the car up and getting going and knowing where I was heading out of uh, Solihull back to Devon again. So the only footage I've really got with driving, which I'll add at the end, is um, taking my daughter out there, because the first thing you know that she'd, she'd uh, want to hop straight in it and be taken to school in it. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to take her to school in it because the weather's too bad outside but i did manage to get a little run with her after she helped me in the unit so I'll, I'll stick that footage at the end i'd take you out now but again there is still ice everywhere and uh, although i like to throw my cars around have fun on the roads i don't think i'm going to do it in this not even for you guys so there we have it i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing all the comments uh, at the bottom of this video and see what people have to say it's gonna be interesting to see what the long-term choppers think of this latest purchase like i say i bought it from a we buy any car site i'm actually really quite chuffed with the purchase it was a big risk but i am i am chuffed a bit with the purchase but there's that major but it's just too nice for me now to use uh, again I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what people's comments are and thoughts are on that because it isn't throwaway money for me at the moment i've obviously grafted quite hard to build a business and to a point where I can get some of this. And it's not throwaway money. I can't afford to massively depreciate the car by driving it around and putting a load of miles on it. Uh, also, I can't really store it here. It's just made me too nervous. I'm going to give you one example. I was here with a subscriber picking up a car the other day. And they were picking up the Clio. And I had the bonnet, the old Morris bonnet here, leaning up against the wall. And a door was open. And we were chatting away. And a big gust of wind came through, picked the bonnet up, and threw it down and it literally landed it must have landed just a few inches away from the corner of the Porsche now this door is a lot heavier and lent over there so we we're all good on that but that kind of thing made me really nervous I come in and out of here carrying jacks and tools and all sorts in the showroom I haven't got time to fit it in there with this with, fit it in with the stock and again you know I was chatting away to some customers the other day they came in and chatted to me and the, the Jaguar is next to the desk and they were leaning on the Jaguar in their jeans against the wing of the Jag and I was even that car which isn't obviously hugely valuable I was going oh you I've just that painted and polished also i worry about leaving it here obviously in the nights and so forth so this is going to go home and get tucked up ready for me to probably end up marketing it when the weather breaks asking quite a strong price for it and just seeing what happens i mean comment down below again i'm asking you to comment a lot in this video comment down below what what are your thoughts as to what we should do with it i think it is going to have to be sold uh because i just can't see an, under any circumstances how i'm going to how I'm going to use it. It needs to go to the right person, I think. It's too nice for me. Anyway, I'll probably repeat myself over and over in this video, so apologies for that. As always, massive thanks to all of you watching the videos, which is one of the reasons that I'm able to indulge, to those sponsors that have been with me from the beginning, which is another reason I've been able to indulge in this. And uh, yeah, just massive thanks to all those subscribers and customers that have bought vehicles from me. Just massive thanks to you all. And I hope this, one thing I do hope that comes from this is it inspires a lot of you people that send me messages about wanting to set up their own business and start trading. If you go right back to those very first videos, a lot of people say, I haven't got the money to do it. You go back to those very first videos with Chops Garage, you'll see the value of the vehicles I was doing. They were cheap cars, super cheap cars. And I'm no mechanic and you saw me get my hands dirty. You saw me swap parts out. You saw me learn the hardware a lot of the time on what to do um, but I've been able to grow to a point now where I have all these stocks this unit everything so if I can do it you guys can do it and if I can help any of you as always bung me an email bung me a message on Instagram and I'll do my best to answer you and hopefully when the weather improves I will be able to take you for a proper tear up in this anyway massive thanks for watching catch you again soon so a certain young lady has wanted to ride out in the Porsche even though I cleaned it when I got it back from picking it up and the roads are dirty again. I think she deserves a little spin. So let's go and have some fun.
I'm just explaining to Britt that we don't rev the Porsche from cold because that's the kind of thing that causes bore score. So we let it get up to temperature. So we need to be up to uh, oil temp to half and the engine temperature to half. The oil pressure is good, but if we rev it now while the engine's cold, it's not good for the engine. The engine temperature, oil temperature, water temperature, we're all just about halfway. So it's time to give Brooke her first experience of the noise. We'll do it with the windows closed first. We've got a national speed limit sign there. <laughs> Going forward now though. Ready? What do you think Brooke? That's awesome. <laughs> That's with the windows closed as well. Can we keep it? <laughs> 